Hey there, Thomas Michel here. Hey, do you ever have problems when you're fingering a chord, your fingers touch the other strings and, and deadens them or mutes them? Well, if you do, you're in the right place. You're going to love this video. Come on back and you'll see. Hi again. Thanks for joining me. Hey, I got a question this week about somebody fingering the C chord and he says his fingers are hitting the other string. This is a common question I get, not just a C chord, of course, but I'm going to address it using the C chord and this will apply to chords in general. Now, first of all, there are some tips I can give you about fingering chords and I've done a whole post on this, so I'll just give you the basics here and you can find my other post. I'll put a link to it on my website. So the first thing is you want to have your fingers so they go up and then angle back down. Take a close look at my hand here. They're, they're not flattening out and that's what a lot of beginners tend to do. You see when you, your fingers go up and down, first of all, the, you're less likely to hit the other string because of the angle. You want to get your angle as much as possible straight down. And the other thing is it's much easier to press down the string. So up and down, hand position, hand position. Secondly, you want to make sure you're using as much as you can the fingertip. Now, of course, these two tips are connected. The fingertip as opposed to the flat pad of the finger. When you're using the pad, you're also flattening out the knuckle. Keep the knuckle bent and use more of the fingertip. Now, it's not exactly the very tip tip of the finger. Um, you have to play around with it a little bit, but more of the fingertip than the pad would be my way of saying that. Make your C chord. Finger it the best you can, strum it. Listen to where some strings are dead in and out. Take your fingers off, put them back on. Try to move things around a little. Don't wait to get it perfect, then take it off again, shake your hand out, and keep doing that. Fingers on, strum the chord, see where the strings are muting, move the fingers around a little. Get your fingers as close to the frets as possible. Even though that doesn't usually make the surrounding strings mute, it will make the string you're on buzz if it's too far away from the fret. As close as you can. You can't always get it right up there, but as close as you can. Strum, adjust, strum again, then take your hand off, shake it out. Do that about 20 times a day for about a week or so, and you'll see that chord will get a lot better. The second tip that I have for the person with the C chord is you can start off with a simpler C chord. It looks like an A minor. Take a look at that. It's just a C chord without the third finger. So by not having to stretch over your third finger, it does make it easier to actually get a good hand position. It sounds good too. The thing is, you don't want to hit that fifth string. That's not part of the chord if you're making a C. You're aiming just for the top four strings. Don't worry too much about it, but you want to aim for the top four. Third, find a guitar with a wider neck. Now, that is a choice I would use after you've gotten a good practice routine and then maybe try the two finger chord to start with if you need to. A wider neck, a classical guitar is a wider neck. If you're using a steel string like a lot of people do, it's a thinner neck. The classical guitar has a wider neck which makes the strings wider apart. It's made this way so you can pick easier with the right hand, but it does help some people with fat fingers to play chords in the left hand. One final note I want to mention is that a lot of people who say they're having problems with chords, really the problem is they don't have a practice, a way of practicing, a routine, a systematic approach to practicing, and they tend to lack the uh, patience to kind of stick with something that's just not working. They look for a magic bullet, either a new guitar or another way of playing the chord or something to sort of just make it happen. I would first emphasize that you need some systematic way of practicing because that's an underlying issue and it will apply to many things that are to come in learning to play guitar. So if you can deal with the practice, find a way of systematically practicing, you might want to elicit the use of a teacher or a good systematic online approach like Real Guitar Awesomeness. But if you don't have a practice routine, everything, every magic bullet will eventually fall flat, believe me. I've tried it. I'm, <laughs> I'm just as guilty of you as looking for the magic bullet to fix something that I don't like or it's not working. So that's it for this video. Thanks for joining me. It's been a pleasure. If you like this, 
please give me a like. I really appreciate it. And if it's your first time, subscribe to my channel. I got a lot more to come and I want to share that with you. If you're watching this on my blog, you'll find I've got a bunch more resources there, including extra tips and some links to other videos. So thanks again. I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson. I'll be back next Sunday morning.